Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium. Welcome. Tonight I'm bringing you a tarantula video. This is a Brachypelma albopelosum egg sac pull. So this was looking really good. I had mom and the egg sac in the incubator and now I'm seeing that she dropped the egg sac and it's actually forming some mold. Not a great sign, but we're gonna open it today. It's been about four weeks. We're gonna open it today and take a look. Fingers crossed that we have a trillion zillion albopelosum babies. So let's get started. On a side note, the sire to this little clutch, the man who loaned me the mail is Jacob Guerrero. We've done a lot of breeding loans together. I actually got to meet his beautiful smiling face this year at the NARBC, which that was super fun. And um, he went and brought me this elbow pillows and mail. So of course I put them together right away. That was in March, I believe, and now we're late April. Mom dropped an egg sack, and it was really funny because Jacob commented this on that video. But actually, Ms. Guerrero, his wife, apparently commented, Jacob, finally, me, no! Two very different kind of pet people living under the same roof. So that was really funny because if you're a spider keeper or a reptile person, lover, most of the time the other people in your life are not on board, which you know, we're weirdos. What can I say? Oh, I've got frogs calling. Maybe you guys will see a frog breeding video coming up soon. So I'm going to pull... Ooh, no, this does not feel good at all. Mmm, no. Like 99% sure this egg sac's no good. Which is a bummer because she's been really taking care of it and nursing it along for weeks not sure what happened so a sign of a good egg sac that's viable is that it's fluffy and loose and this feels like a mm -mm, no it's not good well it's moldy for one but just the texture of it feels like a hardened mass and you can tell all the egg sacs have all the uh, little eggs have started to kind of glue together now just because it feels this way does not mean that there aren't any viable slings. So I'm still going to, oh man, proceed with caution as always. If there's one little life in here, then I'm going to be as careful as I can. Cut through the layers of silk. Hope that you're seeing all this. And... Oh my gosh, I see some legs moving. <gasps> Yay! Not very many, but we have some. So there are a few little ones here that are emerging. So that is, uh, I need a, a spoon and a paintbrush. Any time that my egg sacs yield living offspring, I consider it a win and I'm very excited. So you can see here there's a huge cluster mass of infertile or eggs which have, you know, failed to thrive. And then you can see there's actually more than a few, I think some eggs with legs, which are these tiny little white creepers. 
which you can see crawling around and they kind of look like a little white egg that have just popped legs out. These might actually be second instar already or first instar because these are past eggs with legs because eggs with legs actually does just look like a, an egg with the legs sticking out and um, these look past that like nymph stage and they actually look like these are first instar. Of course this is very fragile process. It's hard to move them without hurting them at all. I said in a video in the past that basically this was a job for delicate hands and so I was good at it and a lot of people kind of misinterpreted that in my opinion as a very sexist remark saying that my hands were feminine and delicate therefore maybe better suited to such fine work and people were saying oh there are men that are surgeons and this and that. Good for them. All I'm saying is that I have delicate hands and so this is a good job for me. I wasn't putting anyone down. If you're a man with very feminine hands, congratulations. There are lots of men that have, well not lots, there are plenty of men who have jobs that need a lot of fine motor skills and dexterity. So if you're one of those gentlemen, good for you. Alright, here's another one. So I see about 10 so far probably. So Jacob, this was not the massive yield that I was hoping for, but still, I'm happy that we have some babies in here. This one even has the malt attached to it still. So I hope all of you are doing well during this quarantine. I know it's been a huge imposition on a lot of people. Many are out of work and struggling and lonely and depressed. So I hope you guys are happy that we can still be together on YouTube. I know I've been watching a lot of YouTube. As a teacher, I've been working at home remotely and that's been an interesting journey. I certainly miss my students. So if you're in one of my classes, know that I love and miss you. School will be over before too long. Um, so comment below what's going on with your schooling or with your work. I'd love to know. Of course, as far as this place, it's on my personal property. So I've been able to manage the collection a little more closely because I'm not leaving home anymore. I do go to the store if I need to. I'm in good health and I am try to stay away from others out in public even though it's tempting to visit with people that you see and stuff like that. I'm really trying, I try to follow the six foot rule and you know, all of the recommendations. I'm not going out shopping just for fun. I'm only going out when I need to. So I wanted to give um, a big shout out to um, some of my longtime viewers uh, Sophia Martinez for one she's one of my younger viewers I have another real diehard right now named Tina who's been really awesome a lot of people sent me a lot of wonderful stuff for my birthday so that was really cool there was one gift that I really love um, from someone he sent me a gift on Amazon and it was just something cool that I wanted. It was a like a Targaryen baseball cap. 
and Amazon messed up the card that was supposed to come with it and so I didn't know at the unboxing who it came from but it turned out it was from a really amazing man in London named Robbie and he follows me on IG and he um, he has a channel too and I believe the name of his channel is Robbie's Talking Tees and his channel is newer but it's really awesome so I would strongly recommend you guys and I'll actually link it in the description box check out Robbie's Talking Tees so he has kind of an interesting thing going he has uh, so he enjoys horror like horror movies and tarantulas which kind of go hand in hand and so his channel is like a horror tarantula mashup which I thought was pretty unique you guys will have to if you're into heavier music and tarantulas or scary movies check check his channel out alrighty I want to make sure I don't miss anybody here so a lot of people have asked me kind of in general how long it takes for a tarantula to drop an egg sac after a pairing and so may as well talk about that for a few minutes while you guys are just kind of sitting here watching it can vary a lot from even if it is a successful pairing moms sometimes I mean I've had a mom drop as early as a week with a fertile egg sac that's pretty uncommon sometimes it can be several months and over a year and so basically if you think that you've observed a successful pairing or if you've cohabitated two animals together and know that there was a potential pairing basically if she has not molted yet there is still a very real possibility that she may reproduce from that male and so sometimes if it's been a long time and they're not seeing pretty clear signs that their female is building an egg sac like a super fat female that's gone off food and not molted sometimes they'll do a, another pairing with the same male or if they have a second male maybe another male and if she shows zero interest sometimes that means that she's already has what she needs and she's already developing an egg sac sometimes that doesn't really mean anything at all maybe they're actually two different species like if you have two that look similar sometimes something is labeled incorrectly or something especially when you have a species with sexual dimorphism where the males look different from the females anyway unless you're very knowledgeable like I work with a lot of different species some people only keep one so yeah you probably get to know the sexual uh, morphology and and the very specific appearance of one species of animal but if if they're in the same genus a lot of them look very very similar Are you okay little one this one's not really moving but looks like it molted out so just going to separate it from the others and put it to incubate there's quite a few in here I don't know how many so in other news um, I have joined TikTok, which I really resisted for a while because to be perfectly honest with you when I first found out about the app it was a lot of students talking to me about it and they would show me little videos like at lunchtime when I was on duty and I thought whatever <laughs> kind of pointless and that's when the back when the app was musically which then TikTok bought it out and um, then I moved to middle school and I had kids that actually were watching stuff that was a little bit funnier, a little more well thought out. And they just kept showing me these videos and doing these, you know, funny little TikTok dances and kids were basically obsessed with it. 
So I started researching it and I found out that TikTok already has over a billion users and that it's appeared to be fairly easy to create content. And I, I mean, we have so much footage all the time. And uh, then, you know, I do follow Gary V, who is a, he's like a social influencer. He's a big time YouTuber and he's on TikTok and he recommended it. He thought that you couldn't go wrong with TikTok. And I actually was on his show and, you know, he said the TikTok was a really good idea. So around Christmas time, I started a TikTok account and I committed to make um, basically one piece of media a day that I would publish. And I've stuck to that like 99%. Um, there was on weekends when we're at expos, it's really hard to keep up with it, but I, I usually have stuff ready in advance and then I just, in the morning when I get up, I just publish one of them. But anyway, it's turned out to be super duper fun and uh, our account is not growing and nobody watches me, but I still love it, it's really fun. There's a couple of, mainly I watch um, animal stuff, of course. Um, I follow uh, Mario Tabros Zoo and uh, Brian Barczyk and then some models and photographers because I you know I do that and um, it's just it's been a lot of fun so if you're not on TikTok yet just do it and it's not just for kids I found that out too there's a lot of boomers as they like to call the middle agers but there's a lot of there's a lot of animal people. There's a lot of funny people. It's just something silly to do while you're sitting there for a few minutes waiting in line or whatever, just on your downtime. The content is, I would say it's easy to make. The stuff I make is easy to make. I keep everything super simple. A lot of people make these super extravagant, insanely edited, videos and they're only like usually 15 seconds to a minute long so it's real easy just to like I don't know if you're on a 10 minute break from work or something to sit there and watch a few videos and just find some entertainment it's not like sitting down to watch TV because you can just take a a real short break I started watching Mario Tabro because I became interested in his park after seeing all of his amazing posts on Instagram. And if you don't know who he is, definitely, if you're into exotic animals at all, I don't know if he has any inverts, but uh, he keeps pretty much anything fantastic you can think of. He's not super duper heavy into reptiles anymore like he used to be when he was younger. So if you don't know who Mario Tabro is, he um he actually was the inspiration for the character Scarface with the Tony Montana, you know, whatever the movie. The what I love about him is that he's always been interested in exotic animals. He's always had the best interest of the animals. He has always had a special relationship with his animals and given them superior care and his park so he has a park in miami called the i think it's the zoological wildlife foundation maybe um miami and his place is absolutely insane like basically if you could dream it that's what mario's place is like it's all big massive natural enclosures oh there's a lot in here he has so he, his probably primary loves are um, cats and primates and he's just a super amazing man he has a small staff of zookeepers and volunteers who do a lot of the day-to-day -day maintenance and care and training with the animals they're very interested in enrichment they're very interested in superior nutrition they don't just give their animals the basics they give them they give them the best stuff then he and his girlfriend do a lot of the uh like nursery care themselves which 
I mean, that's like a 24 hour commitment. My friend Dana Savarelli, who owns um, Monkey Island Rescue, I believe, he does that himself. And it's mostly him at his place. I think Mario's place is bigger, but I'm not sure. But um, Dana, Dana's place is really insane and awesome too. I don't know that Dana's place is open to the public. I do know that Mario does do public tours. So speaking of which, since this whole COVID quarantine shutdown, his zoo has been suffering because it's a huge, huge expense to care for all of these animals. Basically their revenue comes from tourism. This shutdown has really crippled their earnings but Mario does offer webcam time with one of his beautiful chimps named Limbani. And so I was visiting with Mario and I was posting to people about his zoo and just basically encouraging people to donate to help get them through. He thinks they'll be able to open again in the next few weeks, which I hope, I hope they do. But um, he said, hey, um, you want to chat with Limbani, the chimpanzee? And I was like, yes, that would be amazing. And so he and Jason, who's the one of the zookeepers there, they like webcam me through Instagram and I got to see Limbani and oh my gosh, is he adorable. He's so cute and he's just full of personality. And I was thinking he was like nine months or a year old because they had amazing control over him. Not like um, they were dominating him in any way, but just like he was very happy to be with them. He did everything they asked like um, You know like um, they were like Limbani you want to give her a kiss and you know He like went up to the camera and like gave me a little kiss and everything and it was so sweet and he just seemed so happy and So I was asking about him and how old he is and he's four years old And so I thought that was really incredible that they've had an animal for all these years and just, I mean, basically, he's raised like a child. He said that, you know, he's he's like a little toddler, so he has to be watched 24 hours a day. He follows them around and helps them with the work at the zoo, and then he gets put to bed at, you know, in the evening. And during the day, somebody's always on Limbani watch, just making sure he's not getting in, into anything, just like as if you had a toddler. And um, so I just have nothing but respect for Mario and his staff over there and his um, woman that, you know, basically works with him because if you're a partner of a passionate animal keeper, you know that, and she obviously loves animals too, you know that the work never ends. And a lot of people just have maybe like five to 20 animals. And then when you, when you meet these people with these actual private sanctuaries, it's really astounding how much work they personally put in every single day, night and day. And I know that because I have one. I don't have a lot of large mammals, um, but uh, you know, I mean, there's always, any night of the week of the year I could get up in the middle of the night and come out here and check something and believe me there's work that could be done. So I mean I'm I do do that sometimes but I just so I want to encourage you guys to to check out um, Mario's socials because they're a lot of fun and um, maybe even get on and see about their tours as soon as the park opens or maybe before that maybe a web chat with Limbani and I do want to say that they're building him a big new beautiful enclosure and so when you donate you can actually request that the money go directly to Limbani and his his build that they're working on so that's really cool that's really cool because their money has to go across the park toward payroll to pay the mortgage, the feed for all the animals. But if you really enjoyed Limbani and for some reason just want the money to go directly to him, they they allow that and I think that's really neat. So I'll post all those, all those links below so you can get a hold of those fantastic people. 
and it's it just was a lot of fun it was really eye-opening to be able to kind of be face to face with that little chimp and he actually was pretty big he was probably 40 pounds I can't wait to be with everybody again I I hope that all of this COVID stuff blows over soon and that we all can I don't know if we want to go back to the way it was before because that wasn't working for everybody but I just hope that everyone can be safe and happy and I also would encourage you guys during this time to try to focus on what's important now that maybe you do have the time and if you are a person who's lost someone during this time or maybe lost their job during this time and it's you're hurting because of it uh, I'm sending you love and write me about it I'd love to hear from you and I'll if there's something I can do for you I'd like to oh my gosh there's okay so finally done with the separation uh, here is the aftermath of all of the infertile eggs and I've looked through it and looked through it and I'm 99.99% .99 sure I got every viable baby out, which you can see for yourself. Um, a decent yield actually, Jacob, I'm really excited. So again, this was the breeding loan between uh, Jacob Guerrero and I. Congratulations to him, my condolences to his wife because it looks like a lot of these babies are gonna molt out into second instar and um, a few of them looked a little iffy. I've separated them anyway just to give them the opportunity to hopefully molt out and grow. But um, I would say 98% of those looked really good. So that was my Brachypelma albopelosum egg sac cutting. Hope you guys like this one. Comment below what's going on with you during the quarantine and how many babies you think there are because I don't want to count them. You can do it though. I love you guys and I'll see you soon.